Hey everyone, happy 2019. It's your host, Brian Heisler, and today I'm gonna to start a three-part series on interpreting charts and graphs. And today we're gonna to look at bar graphs. So let's get started. So we're gonna jump right into it and look at an actual bar graph or a bar chart. And it looks like what you see here, it's basically a chart with information in the form of bars. In this, color, in this case, they're just blue bars. And so when you look at charts and graphs, the first thing you really wanna do is kinda of look over the chart or the graph and see what information is there. Um, at the top, you have your title. In this case, it's items sold during the week. On the bottom line here, you have your axis, your x-axis, which looks like it lists different items that were sold. And then on the left-hand side, you have your y-axis that goes up and down. It's talking about the number of items that were sold. And so when we look at our questions, we're gonna focus on that information. So question number one says, how many more movies were sold than toys? So obviously, in, able, uh, in order for us to be able to do that, we need to know how many movies and how many toys were sold. So if I look at the movie column here, I'm gonna go up to the top of the bar graph. It looks like it's right in between 80 and 100. So we'll call that about 90. Usually when they don't give you very you know, specific detailed um, lines on your y-axis, you can kind of estimate it. So halfway between 80 and 100 is 90, so that's probably about right. And then toys. So if I go to my toys category here, it looks like it's halfway between 20 and 40, so I'm gonna call it 30. So how many more movies than toys? Well, 90 minus 30 is gonna get me 60. So let me do the math there. 90 minus 30 is going to get me 60. So it looks like there are 60 more movies than toys. All right, number two, it says, how many total items were sold? So total items is on the entire graph, how many items were there? So I have to figure out the total for each item category. So for games, I'm going to call that about 50. It's about midway between 40 and 60. I have toys already. Books is right above 40, so I'll probably call that about 45. Again, when it's, there's no specific number listed, you can kind of estimate a little bit. Movies I have, and then shirts is right about almost at 120, so I'm gonna call that 115 or so. So if I go ahead and add those numbers up, you know, 50 plus 30 is gonna get me 80. 80 plus 45 is gonna give me 125, plus another 90 is 215, and then add another 115 on top of that, that's gonna get me, looks like 330, if I did the math right. And so, you know, I did that in my head. It's probably better to use a calculator, double check your work, it's always a safe bet that way. Um, but 330 should be the right answer. So that's one example of a bar graph. Let's look at another one. This one is a similar bar graph, but it has two bars on each category. And so it is a little bit more information there. And what you see on the right-hand side here is what's called a legend. And it tells you what each of the bar colors represents. The blue bars are three-day park passes in this case. The orange ones are seven-day park passes. So question number one says, which month had a total of 60 park passes sold? So on the bottom of your graph here, we have the months listed. So we need to find the one that has a total. That means total of three day plus seven day passes. So what that means is if you look at June, for example, the blue bar in June for three days is 60. So it's an enticing looking answer, but you also have an additional, let's say 20 seven day passes. So that's actually 80 total passes, 60 plus 20. So that's not the right answer. What we need to do is find the one that has total of 60. So if we look at January, actually, January has 50 three-day passes and 10 seven-day passes. Well, 50 plus 10 is 60, which is great. That's the answer I want, January. Now, it should be hopefully pretty easy to understand that a lot of these answers are automatically wrong because the three-day passes alone are more than 60. You know, for example, April has about 80, so does May, three-day passes. So that's already well more than 60. Question number two, it says, <clears throat> what is the ratio of three-day passes to seven-day passes during the month of April? So we're looking at one specific month here. 
which means we can not worry about the rest of the data. The ratio of three day to seven day. Well, ratios are written in several different ways. One of them is a fraction. So I'm going to write my fraction. I'm going to write 3D for seven, or three day and 7D for seven day, just as a generic um, representation here. The three day passes for April, the blue bar is 80. And the seven day passes, the orange bar is 40. So I have a fraction that's 80 over 40. Now it's always a good idea to um, reduce your fractions as much as possible. With this one, it's nice because they both end in zero, which means you can basically cross those out. You can divide them both by 10. I'm going to go ahead and do the work down here. A nice little trick, you know, basically is when you're dividing things by 10, you're just crossing out the zero. So now 80 over 40 becomes 8 over 4. And if you reduce that, um, you can divide both of those by 4. You get 2 over 1. So the ratio is 2 over 1. Another way you may see that represented is you may see it as 2 colon 1. That's a common way to write ratios, but it's all the same thing. So as you're looking at bar graphs, again, it's really a good idea to glance over the bar graph, look at your title, look at your axes, the x-axis, the y-axis, and just kind of get an idea of what the information is. And then look at your questions to see what they ask and approach it from there. So I hope this helps. Check out the next video on interpreting graphs and charts. Thanks. If you have any other questions or you need assistance and you live in the Palm Beach County area, visit our website at GEDS.com to find a location near you and sign up for classes.